Hey guys, still don't have a headset, so the audio on this one's going to still be a little bit off, and I really apologize for that. And um, trying to get back into the routine of things, I'm starting to uh, finally get a sense of schedule here at work so that I can know when's a good time to uh, communicate with you guys. A um, couple of updates, and I think I've said this before, um, Michael Rosen, he's just gone. He never wrote me, so feel free to play with him. I'm not, I mean, <laughs> what are we going to do with that, right? Well, uh, anyway, hopefully I'll hear something from him in the future. Uh, still waiting to hear back from the Ann Arbor proposal. There's a good chance that I'll get accepted there um, because I know the people. I was on the review board. Um, I'm just pretty confident about that. So the article is still going to move forward, even if it has to move forward without Michael Rosen's actual interview. I can still write about what happened. I have that right. So I'm going to use it. Um, quick update, a little bit of reading material that you guys might be interested in. This is a book by Ian Bogost. There's his name there, Ian. Uh, Unit Operations, an Approach to Video Game Criticism. Let me tell you, um, this book even though it's about video games, has a lot to do with um, system, what's the word that he uses, um, complex systems and uh, system complexity theory about how systems interact and operate, the chaos that's introduced in those systems. And I think that, if, especially if you read the first chapter of that book, you'll get a lot of interesting ideas about ways that you can hack culture, mix and mash culture, because in a lot of ways, um, what you guys are doing, again, it's not just that it's an artistic movement, it's kind of an information movement. Um, the way you guys are, you guys are actually changing the relationship that normal everyday people have with their media. Um, the simple fact is, is that we don't simply have to be consumers anymore we're also people who change and alter media. Um, and uh, in a lot of ways, I could continue this process and really remove a lot of the artistic integrity from it and just talk about it as a form of information theory. It's the fact that you know there have been systems of controls um, implemented in media that have been um, historically extremely um, tight, you know? I mean, the power has always existed with the companies. It's existed with the multimedia moguls who hold material down. And uh, because of how difficult it is to distribute media and material, um, there wasn't really much that the average ordinary person could do with it to interact with it. Um, so in a lot of ways, you know, if we wanted to completely take the art artistry out of this movement, we really could because it's more about information. And what Bogost has done here, I think, even though he's talking about video games, it has a lot to do with you too. So if you get the chance, take a look at that. It's a $20 book. It was published by MIT. Yeah, I know. It's one of the most difficult books that I've ever read. But it's well worth the effort because, you know, it'll give you some direction. And uh, the other thing he hints towards is that the process of opening media and changing the relationship with media is something that's inevitable. And you guys have heard me make that point before. Um, the mainstream acceptance of what you guys do has, in a lot of ways, in my opinion, become inevitable. You're on a, you're a freight train. You're careening off a cliff. And in my opinion, it's a good thing. Um, let's continue the debate. Please continue um, to comment. Please, I know that I've been gone a lot lately. I promise I'm going to try to be a little bit more present from now on. I'm having to get really up close to the camera so that you can actually hear me. Um, headset will be here soon. It might take another week or two because David needs to get paid. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you very much.